Hi everyone, today me, Nelit, and Varjan will be presenting our project for Capstone, Braille Tablet. Um, short outline of our presentation, there will be a project overview, design methods, final results with the successful demo, hopefully, and future improvements mm -hmm. of the existing product. So, project overview, just so we're all on the same page, what is Braille? Braille is a tactile system you, um, <laughs> used, uh, created to assist blind and visually impaired people for, uh, to read and write. And so you can see here are the letter formats. And what was our goal for this project is create a prototype tablet which will use this, uh, these characters as letters to, uh, to make kind of an e uh, Kindle for, br uh, for blind people. Um, we wanted it to be a, a low power consumption, portable, and most importantly affordable. And now how we, don't, we achieve this, we'll discuss in design methods. We have three sections, mechanical design, electrical design, and software design, so let's hop into it. So um, the very in the initial design of the pen was the following. This would be a non-metallic uh, core, a magnet here, another magnet here, and two metallic washers here. This magnet would be stationary, um, held, uh, held by this printed cover and the pen would move inside of it. How would that happen more specifically? Um, so there's an uh, inductive coil here. So what would we do? We would, supply, uh, we would supply power to the inductive coil so it would have a certain direction. And because there's a magnet here, it would, for example, push, uh, push up the button, the pen, sorry. Shove the pin, and because this is a magnet and this is a metallic, co uh, this is a metal, they would uh, be attached to each other. So after this movement happens, we would no longer need power supply for the coil. Mm -hmm. The pin will retain its position, and the same, we would just change the polarity of the supplied power, and the pin would go downwards and uh, mix the directions. But you get the idea. So this was our idea. How do we low power consumption? We just need to uh, be able to move the pin, and after that, no voltage is needed for it to operate. So we had several experiments. Uh, uh, this is our very first model. N not too good looking, and the setup of the experiment wasn't that well. Uh, we used a 3D p printer filament, co filament as our core. We drilled a one millimeter a hole in it to put the magnet inside, as was seen in, uh, seen in the diagram. And uh, this was our printed core, and we wired the coil uh, by hand, very badly, very non-uniform. <laughs> we supplied five volt powers uh, with, uh, uh, it consumed 500 milliampere current, and we used 0, 0, uh, 0 0.09 millimeter wires and 0 0.5 millimeter wires. Uh, none of the cases we were able to actually do the required movement. We need to detach the magnet from one disk and detach it to the other. Just the coil would move because of the magnetic forces. So we, uh, we realized that we need to, of course, improve the core. So the, first, the pen. So the first thing we did was uh, replace the plastic core with the copper wire, the, the thick copper wire, because we, when we would supply power to it, it would heat up and deform, which was not ideal. And then the cover was also changed so the pin can actually stand up to make the experiments, the environment of the experiments better, so we could understand what our actual problem are, and also a place for the coil, so we could position it with respect to the magnet. So what we did also, uh, and still when we supplied it some power, it was not enough to pull or push the pins. So what we did, just for experimenting, we put a plastic piece in between the metal and the magnet to kind of uh, decrease the force of attachment between those two. And we gave it, uh, we used a 0 0.22 millimeter wire, which has, high, uh, which has lower resistance because of its thickness, and, uh, wire, and gave it 12 volt supply, in which case the coil would get zero, uh, would consume 0 0.8 ampere of current. And finally, some semi-successful tests, which was the first time we were able to actually move the pin here and so, but again, this was not ideal as we didn't want anything to be in between the magnet, the plastic, and we realized that we needed a stronger coil. So, um, sorry. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so what we did was actually add an iron core to the inductive coil to make the magnetic force stronger. And because there's a magnet below, the, uh, in the b at the bottom of the pen, the pulling, uh, the pulling uh, the ability, we were able to pull it much more easily 
But however, because there was a co uh, there was a nail inside that the magnet was attracted to, it was a bit harder to detach to detach the p uh, the magnet from the top metallic pin. So what we actually did, we removed the metallic pin and placed the plastic one instead, as it was still because of the attraction of the bottom magnet and the nail, it was still able to retain its position even without any power supply. So again, 0 0.22 millimeter copper wire was used, totals of eight meter, and we finally we were finally able to achieve reliable pin movement. Um, so this is a more detailed dimension, uh, dimensions of our final product. This is a cover free, uh, of three sections designed to hold six pins together, which would make an entire character. And uh, this is the actual look of a character. It's a bit bulky. Uh, this, is this, this is the size of a standard pen for Braille, which are used on paper for reading, and this is the size that we got, which is, you can see, significantly larger. You are still able to feel all the six pins by a finger, but still big difference, and we will discuss how this can be improved uh, in the later sections. To move on to electrical now, design. Now, on to the electrical design. Um, initially, our goal was to create a 14-character tablet. Why 14 characters specific? Because 99% uh, of all English words are comprised of 14 letters or below, um, and hence why we decided to do 14. But at the end of the day, we were only managed to do one just because of time constraints and so on. Um, so, but the problem with 14 also characters is that if we're doing 40 characters, each character is gonna have six pins that we're supposed to control. And that will be a total of 168 output pins. To uh, c counteract this, uh, we use shift registers instead. So um, basically what a shift register is, uh, it's basically a electrical component uh, where it just serializes data transfer. And to make it more uh, understandable in simple terms, uh, basically whenever you have a single uh, input, you can uh, create multiple out, uh, outputs via multiple clock cycles. So you just insert a, a serial data and then it outputs multiple, uh, multiple, <laughs> outputs multiple uh, currents. Uh, in this case, uh, we also use H bridges. So the H bridges was used to control the direction of the pins, either pulling them in or pushing them out. Here's the semi-final circuit design. It's not the final design because the, there we also added a, a, SD card, uh, a, a SD card adapter to the Arduino. But you can see that there is two buttons over here, uh, which will be the user input. Um, one of them will uh, change the page to the, to the next word in this case, and the, the other one will do the opposite go to the previous page. Um, we have two shift registers, and as you can see, one of the shift registers, we call it the inverse shift register. Why is that? Is um, Well, first of all, whenever we're putting in data, if we have a data of one bit into the shift register, then the inverse will give a zero, uh, zero data. And with this uh, combination of one and zero, if we implement it into the H bridge, we can control the direction. So in this case, a one and a zero would go push it upwards, which we identified as the red LED. The L LEDs kind of are a stand-in for the, uh, for the um, coils. Um, and of course, vice versa. If you put zero and a one, then it will pull it down. This is the shift register serial uh, data transfer diagram. So uh, basically, this is how most of the uh, logic works. So we have our Braille code. Uh, in this case, a one would mean that it is uh, being activated. So it's either pushing upwards or pulling downwards. And zero means that it just doesn't do anything. Um, and then we also input a into the shift register a high bit value. So in this case, a one. If the first pin uh, uh, the data of the, the bit of the first pin is equal to the data pin input. So if in this case both of them are one, we will enable the shift register, hence the, the current will start flowing. Then after the first initial, we uh, insert a zero next to the bit, and you see that the, the, one, uh, the value of one kind of shifts to the next pin, and then we compare that to our Braille code. In this case, it's different, hence why uh, we don't have a enable input. And the, the, the amount that we keep the enable input depends on how much, uh, how much time it's necessary for the actual physical pin to be pushed. 
And with our experiment, what we achieved was actually 10 millisecond impulse was enough to push the pins uh, up or pull them down. So uh, that so we did approximate uh, calculations of what a battery operation lifetime would be, uh, what a battery operation time would be. In this case, it's not with like seconds or hours, but how many pages can be displayed. We took as a uh, we took 14 characters as our page number. So uh, current uh, consume when we're pushing the p uh, pull string or pulling the pin with uh, this design is 0 0.9 amperes. Time it takes to display a page of 14 characters would be 10 milliseconds times 14 times 6. And we supply it with 12 volts of voltage. So energy consumed is the number there, 9.1. And we took a battery that, uh, that would satisfy our needs, which is 14.8 volts and 5,000 milliamperes per hour. And overall energy in that battery was the following number. And then we divide the energy in the battery by the energy in the switch. We find that our, we can display around 29,000 pages, of, uh, which is 29,000 words of four, uh, length of 14, which is, on average, like one third of the book, but will we'll be improving. <laughs> Uh, so not onto the software design. Uh, the, the best way I can explain uh, the flow in this, we can divide into three stages, the pre-initialization stage, initialization stage, and the display stage. So during the pre-initialization stage, how are we going to access the book? So we have a micro SD card that is uh, inserted into the, into the uh, uh, tablet itself. And this, this is where a uh, user helper would uh, be very much useful because a blind person cannot figure out who, uh, to, to work with, with a, a screen. So in this case, someone who can help the blind person can insert their book of choice. And it has to be named book.txt, at least for now. They can just replace the inside of the, the text file with whatever text of book they want. And also, for future implements, we're also going to have a config file. Why is that? Just because if we have different tablets with different character uh, uh, numbers, then it can uh, change the uh, change the way it uh, works uh, to optimize. Uh, here is the initialization stage. So during the whenever you start the tablet, it goes through a process of taking out the data from the book, the te text, and then translating it to Braille. Um, hence, this is the part of the code where it translates. And if you look over there, there is a little snippet on uh, the uh, how the mapping works. So we have a. Uh, a binary data that will re represent our Braille code, and next to them will be the the letters uh, that we're accessing. The, so the number, uh, the number of well, which whichever row we take, that is the corresponding letter. After the initialization stage comes the display stage, which is divided into two sections. The first is the converting of electric, uh, electric to physical data. This is the logic that I explained earlier, but only in code form. But before it gets to that. It first, um, it first checks the position where the user is into the book because we don't want to lose where we are whenever we're going to go to the next page. It has to remember. So in this case, it looks through the data and it's, it checks where in, uh, the position is uh, in the text file. And then based off of that, it takes the number of characters that, uh, that ha we have in, on the tablet. So in this case, it only takes one character, uh, takes that, uh, the translated character, and then uh, goes through the iteration. And then comes the ut uh, user interface, which basically it's a very simple code of whenever someone, uh, whenever the user presses a button, uh, it changes the position and, and uh, changes, the, uh, uh, changes the position so that uh, we can take the next iteration. So in this case, if I press next, it will change the position by the number of characters. It will take those uh, translated data back and continue henceforth. So our final results, uh, what we achieved so far, that we are able to control and move each pin using only a 10 millisecond of impulse. And after that, the pin is able to keep its position without any power being supplied to it. Currently, the entire system can be supplied by this 12 volt, 5 ampere power supply. Uh, but a battery with the same characteristics can be used to replace this. So a socket would not be required. Just the uh, better requirements that we found out were we found it quite late in the stages, so we weren't able to order those batteries. Um, battery operation time was 29,000, as we said. The dimensions of the character, a bit bulky, as I said, 28 by 14 by 26 millimeters. 
uh, base price of uh, <coughs> price per character. So base price, considering the controller, uh, the controller, the SD card, the wires that are also used to wire to make the coils, uh, is 86, and 2.6 uh, dollars would be per each character. So if you want to add character, you uh, only need to add. 2.6 dollars and the system is modular because of the shift registers which uh, when they get the data you can just take the wire and put it into the next shift register uh, also the H bridges that control each pin are independent of the H bridges that are con uh, of the other pin it can just like a pu like a puzzle piece just come and stick into it and with the code and the config file we just change of the amount of characters and based on that uh, the code would then itself divide the, no the text into the appropriate amount of characters um, so, um, let me try to do a display now, a demo now, okay, so, mm -hmm. upload the code, the bun is connected, so here we have the switch, <laughs> and, uh, I, I don't think you can actually see it, but here this one turned, uh, this one, came up, and then this one, and then this one, and then if we go back, it would be the previous character. It's a bit hard to tell, but you can definitely yeah, yeah, feel the, yeah. the difference. It's very minute, but... But it can be felt, and uh, some because they are so low, improvement from our uh, previous designs is because they are so low, then you just touch them. It's it, it's not very likely that you would push them down unless you physically try to do that, which is uh, which is definitely a plus. So this was our demo. I unfortunately I can't move it up there, but if you would like to come and, uh, and test it afterwards, uh, you are very welcome. And so our future work and improvements. So, uh, so the main mechanism here is the pin movement itself. So everything, uh, every component and thing uh, that we chose was based on the pin, com uh, pin movement and the requirements that arise from it. So what would make the pin better? If it was symmetrical, um, before I say this, I should mention that ev almost every part beside the magnets are, was made by us. The, co the uh, wire was cut by us, we would file it down, uh, then we would attach it to the magnet, we would make the uh, below uh, the, the bottom metallic uh, disc on which the magnet is to be attached. The coils are was also wired by ourselves, so there are some human imperfections. Um, so the bottom magnet should also be al exactly aligned with the pin, which is kind of hard to do when you're working with such small components. Uh, if the fit pin is smoother, there would be less friction between the pin and the magnet for which it's moving, and all the pins should be identical. So the so we don't have to do some tweaking for each case, for each pin specifically. So why would this help us? If they are symmetrical and straight, less force would be required to push or pull them because sometimes because of the because of difference in uh, weight or asymmetry, instead of going down, it would just go sideways because uh, this part, some part is he uh, heavier than the other, so it wouldn't go exactly down. So we can minimi minimize that. that. If the force is less, uh, if the force is less, then the coil size can also become smaller because we won't need that much current. And so uh, making the tablet smaller in size and lighter. Uh, and less current consumption, as I said, and smaller signal pulse would be required, so we would have a better, better, uh, better battery life, so more pages could be displayed. Um, this is it. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. Uh, instead of the shift register, I'm not trying to redesign it. It's yes. a question. Could you just use a you know, software control parallel ports? Software control parallel ports. On the, on the processor. I suspect it must have that. Um, you probably could. I, I'm not sure, but probably. Um, less for now, <laughs> less, less, less hardware, hardware, that is yeah. true, um, less hardware. Uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is, uh, for us, we mostly just wanted to focus on the uh, mechanical parts of, of, the, of the project, and uh, I do not have the, the coding expertise or... Oh, uh, it's real easy. <laughs> <laughs> the, but but the, the idea of shift register was simple enough that uh, I know how to implement it and we just work with that. And the second question, has anyone else ever thought of it? This design no, specifically? I mean, is anyone, is, 
is like a Braille tablet available by the Chinese or something. There is a Braille tablet. It was actually mentioned in our ConOps, one that I used, but I could not find the specific mechanism that they use. That was the only commercial product that I could find. Uh, which was in some aspects better than ours, that the pin sizes were smaller so they could display more characters, but also it was much uh, more expensive, about $3,000, and also it had, yes. 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 <laughs> and yes. also it had we to have, numbers by a lot. <laughs> yes, and also it had to have <laughs> constant power <laughs> supply, which in, in this case we do have a power supply, but this can be replaced with a battery, which is not the case for their design. So there was an pluses also and minuses. Another, another tablet design that uses a, instead of uh, electromagnets, it uses uh, piezo uh, electric uh, components, actuators. Mm -hmm. But those, each one of those pins costs a dollar. In in, uh, in our case, we could have done a whole character with two point six dollars. Imagine, again, six you know one uh, six pins that would result into six six dollars, and that's almost like doubling the price in that sense. We're cutting the price by a lot, but. So the piezoelectric is buzzing on your hand? Is that what it's doing? Or is it no, it's pushing it up or pushing it down. It pushes it back up, is that what's... No, no, no. no. Forget, forget it. <laughs> Go ahead, next. All right. Um, no worries. I have got a question. Do you think, would you invest into this kind of a project as a business? Do you think in the long run, any time Braille tablets are going to be actually applicable? What do you think? It's both of you. Well, we hope so. <laughs> we kind of thought about it. We kind of thought about it. We're so into the... For now, we were just... Okay, let's just finish the capsule. That kind of mentality. But, but, but we have a lot of time after this. For sure, to think about it. Better. Because of the other technologies being developed. Like, if the person isn't, like, both blind and uh, deaf, I mean, otherwise, you can actually hear everything. That's how like everything develops. Mm -hmm. I actually mentioned that in our conops that there are differences between when you listen or then you read even just by touching it. There are yeah. differences in how you perceive, how you can perceive the, uh, how, I don't remember the exact, so we're doing a lot of like brain activity and stuff, which I'm not an expert of, so I don't remember exactly, but the way the re information is retained when you read it instead of listening to it is a bit different. Um, another thing to mention, um, there are audiobooks uh, that exist, but people still read. Mm -hmm. There is a way, there is also preference involved in a lot of stuff, because you might uh, read a book in a different intonation in your head than you, whenever you hear a person talk instead. There is a lot going on. So in this case, some people just prefer they, them themselves just hearing their own story, their own voices, and making their own characters in that sense while they're reading. So that kind of also helps. So this was about the giving them the choice, so making it affordable so people can have the choice between having the audio and having the actual physical thing, because both are great, but it's like better than you can choose between two. Are you aware of all the market cap, like what's the market size? How many, what, like what's the size of the very, very small that we could find, we, that actually worked, because we found a lot of projects. No, not no, the no, no, number of blind people. Number of oh. blind people who need this. Potential kind of market. market. Potential market size. Mm. We didn't do that much research yet. Again, we were like mostly on, any, uh, for this part, we were just mostly focused the on the engineering part. Later on, then this is further developed, we would, of course, have to do that research as well. Mm. My question is about the engineering. You spend a lot of time engineering the character. Yes. Have you heard about the concept of Lord Patrick's printer? Which is moving pins, okay? <laughs> With a very, very small device that you could just simply pick and place and do, do your pin gener character gen generation. Yeah. It's very small, but uh, it, it will easily miniaturize your device. Oh. Oh, can you well, say the name again? Dot matrix printer. Okay, thank you. It's the oldest type of uh, type of printer that you yeah, can. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's what we used to use. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you used to use it when your age. <laughs> Back to the classics. Uh, yes. Um, I have two questions, but before I get into my questions, I'd like to add some points to the questions that um, our colleagues here asked. Um, there are two US-based uh, companies, actually, that have been developing for the tablets for the past eight years, but either one haven't reached the commercialization stage. One of them is still in the financing ground, and it's not obvious if, uh, if you do a quick online research, it's not clear what are the obstacles they, they are facing or they've faced before that 
over the past seven, eight years that they haven't been able to commercialize this product. So I'm also very curious to get into that. Um, as for why brain tablet instead of an audiobook, mostly, um, I mean, I'm not an expert, I'm not a neuroscientist, but coming from the biomedical engineering domain, uh, whenever there's an impa impairment in the brain, other areas in the brain also get affected. So whenever someone has some hearing difficulties or blind, those closely uh, correlated regions of the brain, they get affected as well. So it also depends on the preference of the, of the patient, of the end user. Um, one of my questions is that in one of the diagrams, you show that the distance between those pins was yes. 2.7 millimeters. Yeah, um, this one. Yes. This is, what it is. is this the closest distance before the magnets into no. different pins start this. affecting each other? Uh, no, this is a standard print on a standard that is printed on a book, a braille print. That's what we were comparing to. The magnets don't really affect each other because. Um, okay, okay. Let, let me ask this in yeah. a different way. What's the minimum distance between two pins before a magnet in one pin starts affecting? Actually, okay, so about the code, if whenever I go back, uh, can you go back? Uh, just physically for the magnets attracting each other, at the moment, the only, the f we couldn't test them very closely because the size of our coils is eight, uh, 7.9, 7.8 diameters, so that, uh, and imagine that plus one millimeter distance is the most, uh, like maybe a bit less than one millimeter distance. So it's about eight or nine millimeter distance that we can actually test. Otherwise the coils would touch each other. So we don't actually yet know how close the actual magnets can be to each other for, uh, for them not to affect. Okay. But you're in the ballpark, you have an idea. Yeah. Uh, also there is uh, another thing to kind of balance things out. So whenever you look at this code, I didn't mention it, but we're actually not doing a serial input parallel output in that sense. It's all serial input, serial output. So in that case, all the pins are going one by one. So if uh, why we did that is just so that whenever uh, one pin, uh, if two pins are going to go up at the same time, the, the, or the magnets would not kind of ruin each other. Uh, in that case, might not affect, the magnetic field wouldn't affect each other. So in this case, that's why we're doing one by one to just minimize those little errors. Uh, because it might push it to the side and the pin might do the friction, might not be able to pull up. So in this case, that's why we did serial. Yeah, uh, about that also, not the magnets of two different pins, but in this case, for our design, because it's very, it's like this size, this magnet and this magnet were really close to each other. So we actually did something to help us with the movement. We put them in the same direction, to, so these don't attract each other, so our movement in both directions is easier. So that's the only experiment with the magnet interaction that we have done so far. Yes. That's good. Um, my second question is that it's more in the general term. Um, if you have more time to work on this, what would be the first point you would try to improve or try to focus on? Do you I probably have a different answer than me, so you go first and I'll go first. first thing thing you yeah, to probably the, the design of the pin is very important, as I mentioned. We don't know yet what kind of it needs to be automated in some way, we know that definitely, because uh, first of all, it takes incredible amount of time to make, make just one pin, let alone a lot of pins for a lot of characters. But also, as I said, they're not really symmetrical, so they have a lot of imperfections. So I think the, what we would focus on is research how we can actually make those. Mm -hmm. That would be the first thing. And so the um, price you mentioned is just the, the bone price, okay? Material, materials price. Yeah, not the work. Materi materials. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, if not, not the work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Getting into the business. <laughs> you are spoiling the engineers. <laughs> if we get access to a, a lot of industrial-made products, it will definitely make a lot of things easier because uh, the magnets might be, uh, again, might be a bit strong. We might need a, a much weaker magnets, but of course there are not a lot of um, a, a production out there for this size of magnets, and then now we're trying to be picky of the of the uh, how strong the magnet is. There is a lot of finicky things like that that if, if we could, we would change them. And as well, the <coughs> same thing with the with the coils. Mm -hmm. uh, we tested it after after we finished this uh, tablet. Um, we realized that uh, we could even go one uh, make the wires a bit uh, thinner. 
And so that will also kind of change the size and might bring the, the, the pins even yeah, closer. Yes, so one so of the pins uh, has a coil with diameter of seven, which is the f f smallest one that we got so far. But we got that for like, like two days ago because one of the wires cut loose and we didn't want to waste time to make five more again because we needed to assemble all this. This is a device for future you could make uneven length of pins so you could put them a lot denser. So yeah, yeah, we were thinking of that. Awesome. Just the coil. But, but, but research yeah. dot matrix printer. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I'll go home first thing. <laughs> That's how I want to research. <laughs> I had to interrupt. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Good. Uh -huh. we have to